Disney and Capcom were pretty much married throughout the NES and Super NES days. Just about every movie and TV series had a video game, and most of them ranged from pretty good to really good, with few exceptions. This whole Disney-Capcom marriage started off in 1987 with Mickey Mouse Capade. You control Disney's poster boy Mickey Mouse in an adventure to... save their mystery friend. What the hell's a mystery friend? I know who all my friends are, and if one of them were ever kidnapped, I think that by process of elimination I'd be able to figure out who it was. Mystery friend? I don't know, that's what the manual says, so just go along with it. You'll go through five levels throwing stars at a bunch of weird shit and battle bosses that are supposed to be based off Disney characters. For some reason, Mickey drags Minnie along who contributes nothing. I mean, yeah, she'll fire stars too, not nearly as many as Mickey, but it helps. But she's such a nuisance. She'll mimic all your moves, it's sometimes a pain in the ass to get her to follow you through tricky places or climbing up ladders, and if she falls into a pit, she dies, and Mickey is so grief-stricken that he just decides to end it all himself. What a great message to be exploited to the children who worship everything Disney. Thankfully, Minnie is immune to damage from the enemies themselves, but she's still more of a burden than a contributor. Another annoyance Minnie brings to the table comes in the first and final stages. This ugly-ass pink crow will sometimes kidnap her, which you'd think would be a relief to get her off your back, but you can't finish the level without her. So you have to find this hidden bonus game and take a wild guess at which of these four statues has Minnie, and then you get her back. Guess wrong, and you'll have to find another one of these pointless hidden bonus games. And it's not process of elimination. The statue Minnie is in is always randomly generated, so you have a 25% chance of getting it right every single time. So how do you find this guessing game? Same way you got her ass kidnapped in the first place. When firing off your stars, you'll sometimes hit a hidden item in midair. Sometimes it's a power-up, those of which we'll get into later, but sometimes it's one of these goddamn crows that snags Minnie. So once you're alone, you'll start to find these hidden areas. Aside from the crows that kidnap Minnie, the invisible mystery items will sometimes be the purple health diamonds, which will fill up your health completely, the light blue clear diamond, which will wipe out all the enemies on the screen at once, and this fairy that will give you temporary invincibility. You can also find cake after killing enemies, which will restore a few health points. You start off at 10. The controls are good, but like I said before, you have to keep your eye on Minnie. So you have to plan your jumps to ensure that both you and her can clear it, and at the same time avoiding enemies ahead of you. It can be awkward, which brings the fun factor level down. Capcom soundtracks are usually pretty awesome, but the music in Mickey Mouse Capade is mediocre at best. I know there aren't too many songs to choose from, but none of them really stand out, they're just there in the background. Graphics are colorful and actually pretty good for 1987, but the enemies didn't have a whole lot of creativity input into them, especially the boss battles. The designers were really just going through the motions with this one. So the first stage you'll take on is the funhouse. Each screen has two floors with ladders that go up and down from floor to floor and screen to screen, and doors that take you to the room adjacent to it. The walls are color-coded by columns, so the room you start off in and all the floors above it are green. The rooms to the right of them are all blue, and the two columns to the right of them are orangey red. These lamps that look like hand grenades can be shot to reveal items, but you start off with no weapons. You have nothing to defend yourself with, so you have to avoid everything at first and go find some. Thankfully, the enemies you have to deal with at first aren't hard to avoid, which includes snakes, cats, spiders, and whatever the hell that is. First thing you'll notice is someone behind this locked door shouting, Key. Either that or the door is talking. Who knows, this is Disney. Inanimate objects sometimes talk. Anyway, ignore it for now and climb up one screen, head right, and... Ah, what the fuck is up with the chandelier? Well, blue ones are loose, and they don't take kindly to strangers walking underneath it, and so they drop. The red ones you can pass under freely, so keep your eye on them before passing, and when you encounter the blue ones, make a quick retreat after briefly passing under. So after getting past the chandelier, open up the chest, and now you have Mickey's stars. Minis are in the chest on the floor above, but you can't get them from here, so move back out and climb up one screen and head right again. Fire at the switch on this window to find an extra life and then move on to the next room. Open up the chest and grab the key. Now despite the fact that your natural reaction would be to go back to the locked talking door that keeps saying key, you don't want to go back there yet, because you got the wrong key. The door you're after is the one above here being guarded by this cat. 
So go back two screens up the ladder and two screens to the right and you'll face off with the cat. Jump over its weird ass projectiles and fire continuously. There's no real complex strategy here. Just be sure to take out the shitting crow overhead. When you get to the next room, holy shit, the brooms from Fantasia have come back to get revenge on Mickey. So anyway, you have to shoot the handles in order to kill them. Move down one screen and go through the left door up here. Keep going and you'll run into the treasure chest that contains many stars. But sometimes this red fuck pops out of the chest and attacks you and you don't even get the stars. There seems to be no rhyme or reason as to how this happens, it's completely random. If you leave the room and come back, odds are the red thing will be back. But after trying it a few more times, you'll eventually get the stars, which I highly recommend you get. So go back out, climb down the ladder and follow the linear path until you reach the boss, the wizard. He'll fire red bouncing projectiles from his wand and jump slowly. Jump over them and fire rapidly. It doesn't take a whole lot of shots to kill him. You can also try to sneak off the ladder after getting Minnie onto the top floor and have her fire while you're still on the bottom floor, not taking any damage. But this guy's pretty easy so it doesn't really matter. So after you're done killing him, grab the key from the chest and go all the way back to the beginning of the level. This is the key that opens the talking door and now you've cleared the funhouse. The second stage is the ocean. It's incredibly short and rather redundant. It's just a short stretch of jumps and random sea creatures to shoot at and birds that drop turds on you. Here's the process of the whole level. Stand on the edge of each platform, shoot at anything in sight, and jump to the next platform, making sure to get enough distance for Minnie to land on too. It's pretty easy as long as you don't rush your way through the stage and take all kinds of damage. The other threat you might run into are the waves that come out and leave a flying blob that I think are supposed to be jellyfish. Jump straight up instead of over them and fire off a star to fend off the jellyfish. Soon after that is the boss, a dancing crocodile which is supposed to be the croc from Peter Pan. To fire off bouncing bubbles. Just like the wizard, no real complicated strategy is possible. Just jump over the bubbles and fire as rapidly as you can. In fact, this boss battle is very similar to the last one. All he does is jump and fire projectiles, except now they're a little faster. The game designers really had a hell of an imagination. So once you take care of the croc, it's on to the most annoying level in the game, the woods. Why is this level so annoying? Well, it isn't so much the enemies or the long pits that many can fall into, it's the cryptic navigation. At the beginning, there's a sign that reads start. After walking for a little while, killing off some more of these weird-ass enemies, you'll find an entrance in this tree. It seems to send you back to the beginning, so you'll assume that it's a trap and bypass it. Might as well just keep going left to right in traditional side-scrolling format until you find the start sign again. So, okay, I guess I shouldn't have ignored that second entrance. You go into it, and now it's summertime all of a sudden. So you'll pass through and encounter some more of these trees with entrances. So I guess I should take it and... Ah shit, I'm back at the beginning, and it's spring again. Did I step into a time machine? Well, you're gonna want to go through the second entrance way, and, and now it's autumn. As if you couldn't tell by now, the sequence is going by season. The last two areas, you entered the second tree door both times, so it's probably the same thing here too, right? But nope, you just end up back at the beginning of the autumn portion. But if you try the first tree, you'll end up back in the spring. So where the hell do you go? and it's a pain in the ass to figure it out while these buck tooth bears clad in overalls chuck lumpy rocks at you. They're the most annoying enemies in the stage. So the way out of here is a hidden doorway. Shoot repeatedly at the third tree after the second jump to find it. Now this isn't too bad because you'll probably find it while firing at these bears anyway, but the winter one is ridiculous. Again, it's a hidden door, but locating it is a bitch. The first door leads you back to autumn, the second door takes you back to spring, and then there's a hidden door past the fourth jump, and that also leads you back to spring, and then you're back at the beginning. What the fuck, did I miss something? Every time you go back to a previous season, you have to remember the door that took you to the next one, which could cause you to mix up your memory, and if you take the wrong one, you'll have to start all over. It's a continuous case of trial and error, and when you get to the winter one, you'll find yourself going through all the doors several times because you think you missed one, but the truth is you're trying the same ones over and over. At least when you die, the game has the common courtesy to start you off at the beginning of the season you're around rather than the beginning of the whole stage. But there's no continues in this game. Anyway, the hidden door is in the first tree after the start sign. But you have to go all the way around once. You won't get it right from the way you start. So why the hell would you think it would work once you do a loop around the stage? So once you do go through, you'll end up in a giant flower garden of some kind. That makes sense in a woods level of time travel. There'll be a few spots where the ground opens up, but as long as you stop walking when they appear, you won't fall down there. Thankfully, there are no hidden passageways here. You just walk a pretty short distance, kill a few familiar enemies, and you'll reach the boss battle. An orange snake that fires rings out of its head. Once again, no super complex strategy. The rings are pretty random, so just fire rapidly and try to maneuver in between the rings. 